You know, looking at these photos on my phone, I I love macro photography. And honestly, I'm just excited to dive into today's video. What's going on? My name's Andrew. Welcome to Lentional's channel. Today, we are reviewing the 100 millimeter macro RF lens and the 35 millimeter macro RF lens to answer the question, does focal length actually matter when shooting macro photography? And I'm not gonna waste any time today. We're getting right into it. I'm not joking. So I thought it would be important to start with the 100 millimeter macro lens. Why was it important? Just because I wanted to do it. So while I've got you here, let's go ahead and break down these two lenses, starting with the 100 millimeter macro RF lens. This guy has a working aperture range of f2.8 to f31. It has hybrid and optical image stabilization, which means that it can reduce the shake that you normally have when hand holding your camera to take photos or video. It has this spherical aberration ring, which essentially just changes the characteristics of your bokeh. And this comes in handy, especially if you're doing portrait photography and you're not shooting macro photography. And I'm not talking about it today. Sorry. With most macro lenses, you're looking at a one-to-one -one magnification ratio. Essentially, it's going to magnify your small subject to fill your frame. This right here has a 1.4 magnification ratio with about 10.2 inches of minimum focusing distance and nine centimeters or about three and a half inches of minimum working distance. More on minimum working distance in a little bit. Moving on to the RF 35 millimeter macro lens. This little guy has a working aperture range of f1.8 to f22. Two. It has optical image stabilization, which again, allows for reduced shake when taking photos handheld. And like its big brother, it also goes above average with a 1.2 magnification ratio. It has a 6.7 inch minimum focusing distance and a working distance of 6.5 centimeters or about two and a half inches. Now that you have the specs, let's go find some objects to take photos of them, preferably tiny objects. My very first subject is going to be this tiny little coin. This is actually a Euro my friend picked up for me while he was in Greece. I thought it was really sweet of him. And I'm going to get photos of this dude on the front. Next up is this tip of incense that I use. I use it in my studio all the time to create a nice peaceful mood and I want to get nice and close on that charred wooden texture. After that, we've got this match head to actually light the incense. I just wanna see if I can get the fire burning the tip of the match. I think it's gonna be pretty tricky, but I'm excited to try it out. And lastly, I've got this. Can you tell what this is? It's an orange. And I'm gonna be getting the texture of this orange skin nice and close. Comparing these photos now leads us to the question, does focal length matter when taking macro photography? Usually what we're worried about when we think of focal length is either compression or simply field of view. 35 millimeters is gonna have a wider field of view. 100 millimeters is gonna be tighter. It's gonna have more compression. You're gonna use one for portraits and you're gonna use another for landscape or street. And that's exactly how we should be thinking of these lenses when it comes to traditional standard photography. But with macro, we're not so much worried about our field of view we're worried about our minimum focusing distance. I remember when I first tried my hand at macro photography, all I did was grab my camera, grab my lens, and get as close as possible to the subject. And it was a mess because if you are a macro photographer or if you've ever tried to do macro photography, you know that it is so much more than just getting close to an object and making it look big. And as I said earlier, the key thing that you should be worrying about is your minimum focusing distance. Now, I will say in the studio, I don't have to worry about that so much. 
either one of these lenses is going to perform well, though you probably noticed that I didn't have a super wide open aperture because the closer you get, the softer the image is and the harder it is to focus and get all of the image in focus. My goal was to stay anywhere between f5.6 and up. So if you think about it, having that 1.8 aperture on the 35 millimeter isn't necessarily important for macro photography. So where does minimum focusing distance come into play? Simply out in the wild, in the field, especially when you're taking pictures of tiny critters. I'm talking bugs. And I love this about macro photography. I love finding things in the everyday that we pass by, that we walk over, that we don't even know exist, and seeing them for what they really are. With a shorter minimum focusing distance like what we have in the 35 millimeter, we are risking getting too close to a subject and ultimately scaring it away, ruining our shot. The key benefit of this lens compared to the 35 is that it has a longer working distance. This is all great in theory, and we talk about it here in the studio. It makes sense, but the best way I know how to show you is to go out and try it myself. So let's bring these guys out into the wild. this macro photography video to a close. I hope you can see me, I'm using the PowerShot V10 on auto mode. More on that camera in a little bit. But here are my final thoughts on the question, does focal length matter when shooting macro photography? Obviously your field of view is going to be different. That's a given. But like I said earlier, what I found in the field to be most valuable was your minimum working distance. Walking around with the 100 millimeter on my camera was great. It allowed me to be a little bit further away from some of the critters, so I didn't scare them off. The only calm with that is that it was heavy, it was uncomfortable, and dual wheeling that with a flash off camera felt at times a little bit wonky. The 35 millimeter answers that problem at a cost. I had to get a lot closer. The focusing was not as fast as the 100 mil and it didn't feel as sharp. So I had a lot of missed focused opportunities or things that I was hoping to get in focus using macro even past F11. At the end of the day, I feel like they both gave me really fantastic macro results. So I don't think that you can go wrong with either. But if you were asking me which one I would pick up first, it'd probably be the 100 millimeter macro RF lens. So if you guys enjoyed today's video, and you want more of this, then I'd recommend you like, comment, subscribe, join the Lens Rentals channel so we can keep doing our thing and you can keep getting content like this. If you're interested in renting any of the gear I talked about today, you can go ahead and click the links down below. All you gotta do is add them to your cart and they're yours to rent. And as always, we got more content coming out. I can't wait for you to see. And in the meantime, I'll see you in the next one. All right, peace.